right to our webinar now. Uh, with us is uh, Hadas Perkal, a young woman I've known since she was a child. Uh, she is a marine biologist, uh, marine uh, wildlife expert here with uh, SPNI. She's coming to us from her home in uh, Moshav overlooking the Mediterranean Sea appropriately. I think all of our marine biologists should have a house like that. Uh, the sea's amazing. I mean, I don't know if you'll touch any of the wider issues that us today, but uh, we're looking forward to, uh, to what you have to say. And I'm sure there'll be lots of questions. I know I have some already. Uh, Hadass is responsible for um, all the projects we do in, uh, in our protecting of the sea coast, the Mediterranean Sea and the wildlife within it. Uh, and there's, uh, you know, it's, uh, Israel's a country with a long sea coast and yet somehow it's, uh, you know, the, it's the blue, the blue half of Israel. And uh, I don't think it gets enough, enough attention so we're happy to put a spotlight on it for the next hour. Um, we've got over um, close to 200 participants already at us. It's a, this is gonna be a, a popular webinar, I can tell. We're all looking forward. So uh, thank you very much. And thank Avi, I wanna thank Avi in, uh, in Toronto. Uh, Avi Sadiv is doing our back office today. He's our executive director in Toronto, uh, replacing Lawrence Casimir, who's usually here. And of course, I wanna thank our supporters all around the world and especially our dedicated board members in Toronto, New York, and throughout the United States and Canada, uh, and in the UK and in France. Uh, sometimes they're with us as well here on the webinar. So we really appreciate it. And of course, all of you visiting, all of you from Israel as well. I don't wanna neglect that, but uh, anyway, thank you all and uh, enjoy, the next, uh, enjoy the next hour. Adas, it's all yours. Okay. Um, so let me just share my screen. Sorry. So. We are going to talk about wildlife, um, uh, marine wildlife um, in general. We're going to talk about sharks too, uh, but we'll talk about a lot of other cool stuff um, in the Mediterranean. So uh, my name is Hadas. Um, uh, I'm working in the Blue Half, which is uh, the marine project uh, in the SPNI. Um, Alon was here probably about, I don't know when he was with you guys, but maybe six months ago, um, spoke to you a little bit about um, marine marine nature reserves, um, and today we'll learn a little uh, another uh, another uh, thing that we're that we're dealing with another project that we have um, in the blue half called Sea Watch. Um, hey, Haley. Jay, you have to mute yourself. Good. How are you? Can I do it for him? No. Okay. Um, so this uh, so the. In Israel, we have um, a lot of coastline compared to such a small country, 190 kilometers of coastline. I'm, I now realize that maybe I should have uh, uh, changed that into miles for you guys, but um, a lot of coastline, um, 26,000 square kilometers, which is actually more um, than the ter terrestrial part um, of Israel. So we're called the blue half, but it's actually even bigger than half. Um, so lots and lots of water in Israel. Um, is it getting the amount of attention that it deserves in terms of conservation? Um, I'm not sure, but uh, things, things are definitely looking up uh, um, um, changing. It definitely deserves um, a lot of conservational um, attention. So this is a rhetorical question for anybody who's ever walked along the beaches of the Mediterranean in Israel. Have you ever run into um, some type of hazard, whether it be pollution or debris and other garbage. Um, maybe you've even scuba dived in the Mediterranean and, and seen some, some ghost nets or other fishing gear um, that stayed behind, injured sea turtles or other, or other animals, um, fish. Um, and maybe you've also uh, um, seen, this can also happen um, on beaches around the world and not only here, but you've, maybe you've seen sort of fishing activity and you weren't exactly sure, uh, it sort of it smelled fishy to you. Um, um, and you didn't know if that's something that's allowed to be happening, um, if that activity is allowed or not. So um, lots of things going on um, on the coast of the Mediterranean. Um, and uh, there are rangers that are in charge of sort of uh, making sure that everything um, is going according to plan, but they can't be everywhere at once, especially when we just understood how much area, uh, marine area we actually have in Israel. 
um, um, but but maybe one of uh, the positives of being such a populated country is the fact that there are so many people in the water and on the beach at all times, especially during COVID. Um, it has turned basically people just need uh, a breath of fresh air after being home so much and, and the beaches really have turned into this, into this place of leisure for a lot of people who I think weren't even at the beaches before. Um, so we were trying to think, how do we utilize the fact that there are so many people um, on the beach, so many pairs of eyes, um, not enough rangers. So um, what, do, what do you do with that? So it says there, um, you can save too. This was a short uh, clip that we made um, for people sort of to see what we do. In the video, we saw a ray um, in Elat, a uh, spotted ray um, um, that was caught in, in, a, fi in a fishing net um, and was released um, safely, safely due to thanks to, to the person who reported it. So we're a public app, a free app um, um, in, in the regular app stores. You guys can already see us there, even though our app is in Hebrew right now, only in Hebrew right now. Um, for uh, reporting, the public can report um, on any uh, marine hazards that they encounter and, be, and it's relayed, sent automatically um, in real time to whichever relevant authority that's gonna take care of, of that hazard. We started our work in the Mediterranean about five years ago um, and two years ago expanded um, also to uh, the Gulf of Aqaba or Elat. Um, except for that, just so we uh, understand sort of the context. So we are the blue half. Um, marine reserves is, is, is um, one of our main issues that Alon spoke to you about a few months ago. We also deal a lot with sustainable fishery management, um, marine spatial planning, having to do a lot with, um, with oil um, and, and gas infrastructure and searches uh, um, in Israel, which is a, which is a big um, issue in Israel right now and, um, in, and protecting endangered species. So we're gonna to touch on all these subjects while we, while we go through the lecture um, and, and sort of understand uh, um, how, how Israel works in terms of the hazards and, 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 and how we take care of it and how we utilize the public um, in order to take care of it. So here you guys um, are seeing examples um, from the last year on the right, some kind of metal fence um, um, that we needed a, got a tractor uh, to come and, and, and take out, um, to get out from the beach, um, a barrel dripping some kind of black fluid liquid that we definitely don't want dripping um, into the beach, um, some kind of crude oil. Um, this was also inside of a marine reserve. So uh, extra important sort of to take care of that really quickly. Um, other examples of garbage, this is actually taken in Elat. Some teenagers threw this bus window off of, of a pier in Elat. Um, underneath the window, you can see soft corals. Corals are animals. They, they filter their food um, through the, from the water. So being covered like that with a window would eventually kill uh, the corals. In the picture, this is one of our marine ranger, well, not ours, but the NPA's, Nature and Parks Authority, marine rangers um, um, who scuba dived to get to get that window out and save those corals. Um, um, fishing gear is a huge problem. I'm meaning fishing gear um, left over in the sea is garbage. Um, ghost nets are nets um, that are left in the sea uh, and are not being used by any fishermen anymore, meaning nobody's gonna come and collect what the net is catching, but be sure that the net is still, is still um, um, catching a lot of animals. Um, so in the video, you're seeing a huge ghost net. Just imagine that wall sort of in the water and imagine the amount, um, how problematic that would be for, for marine wildlife. Um, in this instance, it's actually seven Mediterranean lobsters. Um, soon we're gonna see them. So Mediterranean lobsters are endangered species. They actually almost disappeared from Israel's coastline. We'll talk a little bit more um, um, how that happened. Um, so once they almost disappeared, they were declared as protected species. So they're not allowed to fish them anymore, not allowed to serve them in restaurants, which is where they were going. Um, 
Uh, and, and so here seven are being released by an MPA ranger who's also a very good free diver made his way down there and is releasing these um, special lobsters, except for that you can see other protected species um, that were caught in, in these ghost nets and released. Um, so here on the bottom on the left, uh, we're seeing a guitar fish. It's like a, a shark's cousin. Um, um, and on the top, this stingray, another, another uh, a cousin to the shark um, um, who, actually, who wasn't as lucky um, and didn't make it, the net was taken out um, too late. So we get uh, um, reports on ghost nets all the time. They go to the NPA and they uh, try to, to, to take them out. We actually got a report like that um, today. So hopefully um, the net will be taken out of the water tomorrow. Um, so in 2016, uh, the, a big fishing reform came into play. We're actually taught that basically the fishing laws in Israel weren't updated from the first, when they were first written in the 50s, basically when the country um, became a country a few years uh, after 48 uh there was like okay let's make fishing laws which was a great idea except they weren't updated until 2016. um thankfully uh today all of these uh new um uh, laws are in place where you're allowed to fish so areas um that are that are more special that have a lot of animals in them are are close to fishing or at least to trawling um when you're allowed to fish, there's now two months, between a month to two months a year, um, where when fishing, all kinds of fishing is prohibited in order to allow um, fish to, to, to grow. Um, um, the minimum catch size, so if I catch a fish that's too small, I have to release it back um, to the sea. Um, same for, 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 for the nets. So how small is the, is the mesh size to allow um, the small fish to escape? Um, and, and how much I'm allowed to take um, and which species. So all of this uh, um, came in and really changed the way, uh, the way fish, fishing is managed in Israel. There's still a lot to be done. Um, this, uh, in my opinion, is kind of um, the first steps, but it really has um, made a difference. Uh, and with new laws, you also get people um, um, who break those laws. So uh, the app allows you to sort of to, to report suspicious uh, fishing activity. Obviously, it's the public. They don't for, uh, they don't for sure know um, if it's illegal or not. But basically, letting us know that something is happening um, uh, um, that goes straight to the rangers, and we can also talk to the reporter and sort of bring him in on on the whole thing, um, whether it's allowed, it's not allowed, um, why and, and why and so on. Uh, so here on the right we have. A fisherman who's uh, fishing with a, a rod in the only marine reserve in Israel where you're not allowed to fish with rods from the beach uh, with a fishing rod. So um, he's uh, talking to one of the rangers. And on the left, um, we have uh, this was actually taken, the, the report came in the evening before. So someone saw this fisherman uh, setting up this net in the evening, but it's during the breeding season when you're not allowed to be setting up nets. Uh, and the NPA rangers were, were there waiting for him the next morning. Um, both these fishermen um, um, got penalties uh, for their, for their uh, activities. Um, a little bit about sharks. I know you guys were all uh, waiting for this moment. Um, you know, we're talking about a lot of other cool animals too. Um, so this is a sandbar shark. There is um, a really interesting phenomenon in Israel with sharks um, that they come in these winter months to to uh, the power plants in Israel. Power plants are actually sending hot water out into the sea all the time. Those are the water that's cooling their turbines. Um, and for some reason, the sharks like that hot water. Until today, we don't really know why. Um, still, still, uh, other organizations and research and research uh, um, partners are, are are asking that question. Um, this is a phenomenon that hasn't, uh, as far as we know, hasn't been seen anywhere else in the world. Sharks coming uh, to a power plant. There is, we, there is actually, if any, if any of you guys are here from Florida, so maybe you're thinking about the manatees right now that come up to the. Uh, to the power plant there to get warm in the water. Um, so that's basically the closest thing that we've heard of um, um, from the rest of the world of this um, happening. It's very interesting. These areas um, are, you're allowed to fish in these areas, um, but not sharks and rays. All sharks and rays in Israel are protected. That means you're not allowed to fish them. You're not allowed to hurt them. Basically not allowed to take them out of the water. 
Um, um, in this case, a shark was caught, uh, it's hard to tell if by mistake or not, um, um, and was released relatively slowly. A ranger um, made his way made his way there, um, which a lot of time is, is a lot of times is, is is the most important thing is just for, for people to kind of know that there that, 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 that there are that there is a, a regulation that people are watching. So uh, so that's the way we, we try to protect the sharks. This was a picture taken um, a few days ago on Friday. Um, in Hadera, which is the main power plant where um, there's between 30 to 40 sharks swimming there at a given time during the winter. Uh, so this was a shark that was caught on a metal cable. Usually when you fish with a metal cable in an area with a lot of sharks, that's um, you might be hoping to catch a shark, which again is illegal. Um, um, thankfully, the shark was released um, relatively quickly. Um, again, because there were people around who were sort of wondering what what they were doing, um, and and reported reported it on Sea Watch. Um, not 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 everything, not all hazards um, and illegal activity has to happen on the beach. Um, so if we said something about minimum size. That's something um, that you're not allowed to fish a fish under a minimum size and also not allowed to sell it. So in this instance, we're seeing a video of um, very small um, fish in, a, in Sorona Market in Tel Aviv, if any of you have been there before. Um, I like this picture on the right, sort of just so that we can understand what it means. Um, of course, the, 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 the bigger meaning of not of taking a fish um, who's very small out of the water is basically a small fish means a fish that probably hasn't reproduced yet. Um, so if we take fish um, that haven't reproduced out of the water, basically we're taking them faster than they can reproduce and replenish. Um, um, so that's what we call overfishing. So in this picture, we can see up top, this small fish is called the dusky grouper. He is also endangered. This is one of uh, a species that we're trying um, to, to get it a protected status in Israel. It's, we're having um, a lot of trouble doing it um, um, because it is also a very tasty fish. Um, so I've heard at least. Um, right, uh, so this fish is too small to be, to be fished. 40 centimeters is what he should be and he is underneath that. Um, what's kind of mind blowing in my opinion is right underneath him, we have the same exact species fish, uh, dusky grouper, okay? Uh, but this is a grouper that was allowed time to grow and to reproduce maybe even more than once, okay? And right on top of him is a, is a, is a grouper that probably didn't, didn't reproduce at all. Meaning by taking, we, by taking that fish out of the water, we've actually cut um, a whole line, a genetic line of, of um, the dusky grouper, which is very problematic for, for, for the future of um, fish in, in, in Israel and in the Mediterranean in general. Uh, Mediterranean is the most overfished sea in the world. So we're not doing, not doing very well in terms, in terms of that. Um, back to the Mediterranean lobster that we, were, that we saw earlier in that video. One of the main reasons that lobster um, uh, almost disappeared from Israel is because it was being fished um, in, in, a, in a very problematic method using a spear gun, which is very specific, meaning you can choose exactly what you want to catch. Um, which is act, could also be a good a good thing. It cuts down on on, um, on unintentional catches. But when you add to that scuba scuba diving gear um, and an air tank, basically the fishermen can be underwater um, for an unlimited amount of time and just find all of the lobsters that he wants and clean out a whole rocky reef. You could just clean it, clean them out of lobsters um, within within an hour. Um, so, so this method is now illegal in Israel. You are allowed to spearfish, but only free diving without, without a tank so that there is something um, um, keeping you from, from, from taking uh, too many lobsters or not taking lobsters at all because they're protected, but from taking too many fish. So in this instance, what we're seeing is a fisherman with a spear gun and all of his equipment is already here in the boat, his scuba diving equipment. Um, but basically he was fishing. This report was sent um, to the rangers and, and was enforced heavily. Um, and we can also report happy things in the app. I like to, to finish, uh, to, to always finish on a happy note. So, so here we have some examples of, um, 
of sea turtle action in Israel. So some of you might know that um, we have two species of sea turtles who nest um, on the Mediterranean beaches of Israel, the loggerhead and the green turtle. Here on the left, this picture is of a nest that was found in May. Um, a reporter that, that um, walks the beaches every morning for exercise and already knows how to identify the tracks of a, of a female sea turtle that, that came up to the beach during the night to lay. Um, he reports it in the app and the rangers make their way there. Um, on the right, we're actually seeing a baby sea turtle on his way back to the sea, but this is in Elat. So Elat is actually technically um, is not a nesting beach for sea turtles, but I was always taught in biology that there's uh, um, there's there's not no such thing as always or 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 never. Um, so one one female green sea turtle who every few years shows up on Elat beaches and and nests. You can see it's a pretty rocky beach, so every, we're we're always very surprised when she makes her way back uh, to lay her nest. So. Um, so lots of, lots of reports uh, during nesting season about, about nests and about hatchlings, um, which is really great. So those are uh, some examples of reports that have come in through Sea-Watch and, 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 and the type of, of uh, um, forgot the word, uh, the, the type of penalty they received or um, educational uh, uh, um, explanation for, for what was going on on the beach. But really what's more important are the people reporting. Um, in this case, uh, the public here in Israel um, um, who, who, who like to take part in this project. And because, uh, and because we understand the importance basically of this whole, the whole circle starting with the one person on the beach reporting, um, it's really important for us to make sure that, we, that, that every report is taken care of from A to Z um, and that we update, uh, we update the reporter with everything going on. Um, and when we do that, we really see we're starting to really build a community of reporters. So people um, that I already know by name um, that are out at the, on the beach uh, all the time or, or on the water um, and, and, and sort of are learning all the time about uh, new things that they can report and new ways to protect, protect the sea. Uh, so in this case, a juvenile green sea turtle uh, that was found on the beach with a plastic sack wrapped around his skin. Um, he uh, made his way quickly to uh, the Sea Turtle Rescue Center. I was actually working working back then at the Sea Turtle Rescue Center when this turtle came in. His name is Nis, which means miracle in English. Um, he was found during uh, Hanukkah. So, so uh, and maybe it really was a miracle that he was found. Sadly, his fin couldn't be saved. It had to be amputated. Just not having blood circulation for that long um, meant that uh, the fin had died and had to be amputated. And today um, he is swimming, he or she who can't actually know yet, is swimming happily in a very large tank in the Jerusalem Aquarium. Um, and he's going to be part of a breeding stock. The green sea turtle is also an endangered species. So the idea is that he will um, breed in captivity with other green sea turtles um, and the babies, the hatchlings will be returned to the wild in an effort to, to help the green sea turtle population in Israel. So I already said a word about this, about um, um, basically our community of reporters um, and, and learning and basically becoming skilled because it's not, uh, some things are easy to, to, to notice. You don't have to understand a lot about the water um, to, to understand if there's pollution or garbage that needs to be taken out. Um, but other things can be a little bit harder and a lot of things can also happen underwater. So we also try to get to scuba divers um, who, who are gonna report what's going on um, underwater. In this case, um, a scuba diver um, who, who took this picture of a dusky grouper stuck in another ghost net. It took us a few days, uh, took the NPA a few days to get the, the net out. Sadly, the fish did not um, um, survive. Um, but these are basically the, the types of reports that we're trying, that we want to get to, uh, to, to, uh, to the scuba divers, to the people that are underwater, people doing other marine sports, um, yachts, uh, uh, surfing, um, basically, any pair of eyes in the water has, has the potential of, of saving another marine animal. Um, and when it has to do with ghost nets, it's also an issue of, of being safe. Um, nets are meant to catch things. They also catch human beings. And that is definitely not a safe situation to be in underwater. And that's why um, we also try to get to, to, to these people so that we can help them take the nets out in a professional, professional manner. 
Um, I said something about trawling a little bit earlier. So this is a trawl uh, trawler, um, uh, the big the biggest fishing vessel that that uh, you would see in Israel, um, and one of the most problematic fishing methods. They basically um, um, drag a very very big net uh, along the bottom of the sea um, for hours and maybe days and catch anything. That, 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 that's in the way of the net, um, very non-selective. So basically um, sea turtles can get caught, dolphins can get caught, um, and, and this is also ruining the, the sea floor um, since it's dragging the net. So lots of other animals in the sea floor that, that are affected by this method um, of fishing. Thankfully in the new, the new uh, laws that came in in 2016, the areas in which trawling is allowed have been, have been drastically minimized. So on the right, we're actually looking at a map explaining the areas of where trawlers um, are allowed to fish um, and where they're not more importantly. And um, under, in the, the well, we're looking at a picture of percent fishing, um, another another type of industrial fishing, um, and we find that a lot of our reporters get confused between these two kinds of fishing when they're trying to report um, on on suspicion of, of illegal activity. Um, and so, all the, this is the type of stuff that we also have in the app, so that nobody has to remember anything by heart. Um, um, but also, really try to get to our reporters and to our community to to explain these differences. And 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 you see that ocean lovers also really want um, to know. It's a whole another world. Of, of awareness um, in terms of what's going on in our seas in terms of fishing, it's incredibly complicated. And I think one of the main things that we're doing is actually raising awareness um, um, that, this is, that this is happening and it's okay that it's happening, but we need to find a sustainable way um, um, to do it. So uh, um, the, this is basically the list of the minimum catch sizes. As I told you each, uh, not all of the fish, but a lot of them have a minimum a minimum catch size. Um, and I find that, that um, ocean lovers really enjoy getting to know the different kinds of species of fish and sort of understanding the differences and the importance of why we shouldn't be fishing it when it's too small. Um, it's really, a, in my opinion, a very interesting, uh, an interesting world um, for, for ocean lovers and for, for people who want to protect the sea. So I think uh, we've discussed most of the categories here. These are all of the categories in the app that people can um, um, report. Um, the, last, the last category is uh, invasive species right at the bottom. So that's something that can be reported as well. Um, this has more meaning sort of long-term. Um, invasive species is a big problem uh, in Israel due to the Suez Canal. So we have hundreds of, of uh, invasive species in the Mediterranean um, uh, over more than 100 years. Some might not even call them invasive anymore. It's more of a philosophical question of, of if, if that fish is uh, local or not after 100 years. Um, and But we're still getting new invasive, invasive species um, all the time. Some of you might have heard about the lionfish. Um, I should have brought a picture of him here, but the lionfish is a pretty known invasive species, not only um, in the Mediterranean, um, but it actually started in the, in the Caribbean. Okay, so the Caribbean, they're dealing with uh, big problems um, with the, the lionfish. In the last few years, they have started um, to base themselves in the Med Mediterranean as well. So nowadays you can go snorkeling in the Mediterranean and see fish um, and see tropical fish. Uh, you don't have to drive all the way down to Elat anymore. Um, just kidding, I'm kind of kind of too bad. Um, in this picture, we have um, an ascidian. It's also a, a type of animal um, um, that filters its food from the water. It's actually the um, invertebrate that's most closely related to human beings um, because it actually has um, uh, in its developmental stages, it has a, it has a, 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 not a backbone, but the cord, the spinal cord um, in its de developmental stages. So basically that makes it uh, pretty close to us since we have a spinal cord as well. It's the only, it's the only invertebrate in the sea um, that has that. So this is a picture of a species that actually hasn't made its way to Israel yet. It's invasive in the Western Mediterranean from the Atlantic. 
um, and we haven't seen it in Israel. And so reporting a species like this that hasn't been seen yet um, could have uh, um, a lot of meaning in terms of our ability to make sure that it doesn't base itself here. So lots of species, including the lionfish, that there's not really a lot to do anymore, um, except sort of manage the size of the population, but you're not gonna be able to get rid of it um, fully. Um, but for species that haven't arrived here yet, um, if we get a report on it um, um, fast enough, uh, there might actually be something, something to do. So this is how the app works. Uh, you're on the beach and you notice maybe a trawler in the water um, who is not fishing in deep enough waters the way he should be. Um, so people can just go into the app and send the report and then that is sent automatically to uh, usually either the NPA, Nature and Parks Authority, or to um, the Ministry of Environment, who they take care of pollution. Um, right, so it's sent to the relevant authority and to see what staff, which would be me, um, I was kind of making sure that it's getting um, uh, the correct response that it, that it should be getting. Um, and of course, also updating our reporter, which is, just as important. So this is what it looks like um, in real life. Just here, it's in English. Um, uh, they, you can check a category. It obviously takes your location. Um, you explain exactly what's, what you're seeing and you can add a picture or a video. Um, this is a picture of guitar fish that were fished um, maybe seven years ago, something like that. The um, sharks and rays, as I said, are all protected in Israel. Uh, but for many, many years, there was no, um, it, it wasn't being enforced in any way. Um, so there was still lots of fishing going on. Thankfully, this, uh, this is something that you don't see anymore um, in the fish markets, which is really great. The guitar fish are critically endangered um, in the world and they, and they, um, breed here in Israel. There's nursery grounds where they breed, which is something very special where that haven't, hasn't been identified in, another, in a lot of other places in the world. So basically protecting these guitar fish here really does have um, a lot of meaning in terms of, of protecting the global uh, population of guitar fish. Um, so I'm not very objective, but I think it's working very well. Um, this year we had more reports in 2020 than we had in 2019. Taking COVID into account, I think that's great. I mean, taking into the account that we've been sitting at home for half of the half of the year. So the other half, uh, it seems like there were a lot of people on the beach and a lot of people who care, um, which is great. Um, and it's working also not not only in terms of the direct effect that it has um, or the direct impact that it has um, on that fish that we saved or the or animal or the piece of garbage or the uh, animal that we took out, but it also has uh, um, a direct uh, meaning in terms of policy in Israel. So in 2016, when uh, all of these new laws came in, it was the Ministry of Agriculture who was in charge to enforce all of those laws. Um, they were not doing their job in any way. Um, and the, the app is helped to sort of show that public pressure, meaning the public was saying, wait, why would you pass new laws and fishing laws if nobody's going to enforce it? Like what, what, what really is the point? And it's important to us that, that you do enforce it. So reports were coming in um, and they were remaining unanswered. Um, and sort of shining light on on that issue, um, and 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 so thanks to Sea Watch and obviously a lot of, of other people and other important projects, um, the Ministry of Agriculture decided to move uh, to give the enforcement to the Nature and Parks Authority. Obviously, also moved uh, funds for that, gave them funds for that, um, and so today we're into the third year, I think, that that Nature and Parks Authority are doing enforcement, and it and it really is working um, very well. So basically that change in reality um, and, and, and in the policy reality um, was brought on um, also thanks to, to Sea-Watch. Um, five years in the life of an app is a lot. Our app is very, very old. Um, it needs, needs to be put to rest. And that's why we're working um, on, on a new, on on a new app. Um, and as long as we're doing it, we might as well add some other cool categories. So um, we're hoping to add uh, the ability to, to, to report um, hurt seabirds. 
um, um, ships or boats that are that are too close to shore, um, um, cars that are driving on the beach. So these are all laws um, today. That is the, the the driving and the and the boats are laws that exist today, but are also very under enforced. Um, and so we're hoping that Sea Watch will be able to make a difference um, in those categories as well. And we're also adding um, a whole a whole part of citizen science, basically to allow the public um, to to report sightings of animals um, and other marine creatures in their in their natural habitat um, um, healthy and alive um, basically this whole category will be sent uh, is going is being, being done in collaboration with um, universities um, and research institutions here in Israel so so lots of scientists who would like to collect by bio, marine biologists who would like to collect um, who would love to hear of sightings for instance of uh, the local sea urchin in Israel, who the last few, the last decade has been basically disappearing from our beaches. Suddenly this year, um, um, there were a lot of sightings of the sea urchin. So there's always some, some scientist uh, in back there that's very, very interested um, to get that data. Um, so we're hoping to, to create um, that collaboration to sort of connect between the public and, and, um, and research institutions. Um, and lots of other cool information that we're hoping, hoping to add. Um, to the information that's already on the app. So today you can go into the app and get lots of information about the different protected species, the different invasive species, the marine reserves. Uh, um, like, like, where are they? What what are the what are the boundaries of the of the reserves? So lots of information. This would usually be the point where I would convince everybody to download the app uh, right now. Um, you guys are are welcome to. I don't know how many of you are um, listening to us from Israel, but but uh, please feel free to download it and report. Um, and if you're over, overseas, please feel, feel bleh, please feel free to download it and and uh, and sort of and and take a look at what I think is is a is a pretty cool endeavor to. Uh, to protect our seas and to protect our marine wildlife here in Israel. Uh, that's it. Okay. Thank you very much, Adas. Thank you. Well, that was excellent. Good. Uh, we have lots of questions. Yeah. And we have, and you were excellent in keeping uh, in your time frame. So we have twenty minutes, uh, and I'm just going to run through a bunch of the questions. Some of them are, I think, short answers. Some of them I could tackle, but I'm going to let you. And uh, the long, complicated ones we'll just have to be quick about. You mentioned Antarctica in the beginning of the talk. I'm not sure I even I? caught that. What, what, what were you saying about Antarctica? I don't think I said Antarctica. I don't think so either. OK, so I don't know who wrote that. <laughs> um, 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 somebody wrote that they recently have seen an email about sharks being used to treat cancer in Israel, research. Uh, by Israeli researchers. Have you heard about that? And do we have a feeling about it? Um, I haven't heard specifically about Israeli research in Israel, but yes, sharks um, and mostly um, uh, compounds in their liver um, are used often in all different in all different kinds of, of medicines, um, but they are usually already um, synthesized in the lab, meaning it originally, it originally came from a shark, but today they already know to synthesize it. By the way, um, there's also, to, I don't, I don't know if, if, Actually, it's, it's, if it's in the vaccine, but there was talk about um, these elements being in, in the COVID vaccine as well. Um, interesting. Um, yeah, so people are asking, the app is called Sea Watch. Uh, it exists now in Hebrew only, uh, and, and it's going to be decommissioned soon, you implied. We're going to have a new it's app. Not going to be de it's not going to be decommissioned. We're just going to, we're, we're going to update it with uh, It's just going to be updated. Okay. Full update, yeah, full update. Just an upgrade. Okay, and will it be upgraded? Um, some guy named Carl Perkal wants to know, is it gonna be in uh, English and Arabic? <laughs> Who is that? Um, I'm, 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 I'm hoping it will be in, uh, in English at least. We're also talking about pilots um, to, do it, to, do, to have this app in Europe as well. So, so English uh, might, might be and maybe other languages uh, coming soon. Right, and I would say that might depend partly on the funds we have available and the funds we can raise for this. Uh, yeah, so. That's, uh, that's one of the reasons why we need the public. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have, we'll continue on, by the way, and I do want to correct myself. I, your name, I realize, is Hadassah Gan Perkal, yeah. and I wanted to just correct that for all of our listeners. 
Um, and wow, we have so many questions here. I'm gonna to try to start from the way we got them uh, in. Um, okay. Um, okay. Okay, um, so people are asking about the funding. I mean, you're describing largely or in basically entirely the work of both SPNI and the Israeli Nature Parks Authority, I assume. Is that fair? Um, the, in, in, say that, ask that again. Somebody wanted to know who funds all this work. And, I, and all this work that you described is both the work that we do and the, uh, the Nature and Parks Authority does. Is that correct? Exactly, exactly. The SPNI is funding um, the app itself that allows people uh, to report. It's a, applications are incredibly expensive. Um, um, and, and in terms of the field work and the rangers themselves, yeah, that's coming from, from Nature and Parks Authority, which is governmental. Great. And I would just say, so SPNI, we're an NGO, a non-governmental organization, a not-for-profit. Um, we get a small percentage of our budget from the government, in fact, but that's mostly for our educational work. And the, all the rest of uh, Hadassah's work, all our marine protection work, and most of our work in general, we, uh, we either generate our own income through our programs, which have been severely curtailed this year, and we raise money. So uh, and that, that's how we're funded and uh, appreciate all the help. Um, our marinas, I mean, talk a bit about the marinas and why they're a threat to uh, marine life. Okay, so marinas um, are an issue um, for all different reasons, but I'd say that one of the one of the main reasons is that when you're when you build a marine infrastructure, it totally changes the um, sand the, the way the sand uh, is transferred. So when Israel sand is coming from um, from Egypt, from Africa, and making its way up to our beaches, and then as each time it hits a marina or any other marine infrastructure, you have more and more sand getting stuck and not being able to make its way um, up north. Today, you can really see the difference in our beaches um, that they are mo uh, turning rocky instead of sandy um, and also becoming um, a lot a lot thinner. So today, in terms of areas where we have um, um, cliff areas, you have the waves hitting the cliffs Okay, there's not, not, we don't have the sandy area anymore to sort of uh, uh, be that buffer. Um, so cliffs are gonna start falling. This can also have a, a, a big effect obviously on oh. the people, people living on those cliffs. In terms of wildlife, um, it means that sea turtles um, are having trouble nest, nesting, laying their eggs. Um, they need a sandy beach in order to lay. Um, so they're having trouble um, um, doing that. It means, um, whatever whatever the the natural area was on which they built the marina um, is going to be very affected in terms of of the habitat and the wildlife that can that can survive there um, I, I, okay. and lots more great yeah they're they're a huge threat to the marine environment a uh, very sensitive environment and I know we're Israel has an expansive plan to both uh, build new marinas and expand existing ones and I know that we're trying to curtail that, uh, yeah. while still being mindful of the needs of the boat owners in Israel and around the world who come to Israel to dock. Yeah, um, and Israel is, right on. There's, really, there's also just the meaning in terms of, 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 of being such a populated country and people having the right to, to sort of also be on the beaches and these marinas are just closing off very big areas. Um, that most of the public are not, are not gonna come to that marina, are not gonna use it, so. Right, but I, but I, but we are the organization that do, it does concern ourselves with the needs of the entire public, including boat owners. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, for sure. Um, um, what legal powers do the rangers have on the spot? Can they fine immediately? Do they have to have a hearing? You mentioned what what happens when somebody gets caught? Um, in terms of, of of the process, they usually. Um, uh, I'm not sure how to say this in English, but they're. Um, they're questioned, um, their whole story is written down, um, um, and then um, um, basically the whole thing is open. It depends on it depends on on what they've done. They won't get uh, they won't get a penalty right there on the beach. It's something that that, that they usually have to go to to, uh, to courthouse in front of a judge who decides what what their what their penalty. Is. Okay, um, tell us a little bit about the problems that the gas fields are creating, or might. 
God forbid, create? So searching, so first of all, the uh, searching for the gas is, is very problematic for wildlife. It, it, it's uh, used using sonar blasts. Um, um, so, so basically like, like, like explosions going off in the water, but they're actually, they're sonar. Um, um, and this can affect basically all wildlife in the sea um, in, different, in different ways. And it depends also how close they were um, to that blast. Um, but even this week, a sea turtle arrived at the rescue center after being uh, with, with injuries to the inner ear and to the lungs um, after being close to, to a blast. We can't really know if it was from gas blasts or maybe army activity in the water, but um, wow. um, the, 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 son the sonar activity is, is very problematic in terms of it's called noise pollution. Um, uh, and 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 then it, and then in terms of, of of creating the infrastructure of of drilling um, in the water, uh, the basically the chances for some kind of 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 problem or oil spill are are pretty high. Um, statistically, it, at some point, it usually happens. Um, so so oil spills are obviously. Um, a death sentence to any animal who's in the area when that happens. Okay, thanks. Um, besides a lot, a word about the other nature reserves, the nature reserves, we, uh, we have the marine reserves in the Mediterranean. So we have a, there's a, a plan um, that SPNI uh, um, did together with the NPA for seven, for seven marine protected areas um, in Israel. So a whole plan from the north to the south um, that makes sure that we have all of our special habitats um, um, are, are in one of those uh, reserves to make sure that we're protecting um, all the, the important things. Um, um, the biggest marine reserve is in Rosha Nikra, which is the most northern point of Israel on the border with Lebanon. It was made um, bigger last year. Um, um, and it's, and, and, I don't remember the exact numbers, but it's actually a, a, a pretty big reserve and you can see the effects and, and going um, snorkeling uh, in that reserve um, is, is you, you can just see the importance of having these, of having these marine reserves and, and in terms of protecting and having these this wildlife in years to come. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Um, Hadass, I don't know if it's your portfolio or not, but uh, what's being due to clean up the uh, Sea of Galilee and the shores of the Sea of Galilee? Do you happen to know? Uh, no, Sea of Galilee is less, is less, uh, my, there is, That's oh, I, I, I mean, I, I, I only have a few words on this because it really isn't, um, mine, but the SPNI is working on another app, uh, for, for garbage, um, where the public can, can report, uh, um, um, the amount of debris or garbage that they, that they run into. And basically each site is going to get, uh, 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 like a, a, the stars, right? between like one to five stars on how clean it is. Um, so you'll be able to check uh, before you go what's what's going on there. Um, oh. And also that basically the idea is to sort of is to is to create that that awareness to, to what's going on and also in in um, the de decision makers and the people who have to come and, and take care of, of that. Oh. So. That's great. Thank you. Um, are there any dead zones with no oxygen in Israeli waters? I don't even know what that means. A dead no. zone. Um, a dead zone is an area that usually when there's a lot, a lot of pollution um, um, coming from, uh, from from land, from sewage. Usually, um, so basically, all of the oxygen is is used up because there is so much um, pollution. I won't get into the chemistry of it, but basically, a dead zone is an area where there is no oxygen, and with no oxygen, there is no life. Um, so that's why it's called the dead zone and um, the mm -hmm. ocean, uh, there are many of them uh, along all of the oceans in Israel. We do not have uh, one in the Mediterranean as far as I know, thankfully. Okay. Um, our friend uh, Mary Swartz in New York asks, is there a way to determine who owned the goat nest or who left it there? Are they ever required no. to be, who, you the know, have serial numbers on them or anything like that? The, the sea turtle mm -hmm. nests? Who are we yeah, talking the about? Nets. The ghost oh, nets. the ghost nets. Oh, the ghost nets. Um, they don't in, in the Mediterranean. No, that's uh, they don't have um, um, identification on them, um, which is would definitely be something that would help. Um, in in Elat, where fishing is um, even more regulated, 
um, due to the fact that, that, that you have the reefs there. Um, there are different kinds of methods, um, mostly um, traps, fishing traps. So like a box sort of sitting in the water. Um, these do have to have uh, a name tag on it um, and to know who's using it. Okay. Um, a word about the problem of plastics, of specific plastic bottles in the sea. Um, it's one of the main challenges I think that, that Israel is dealing with. We are um, pretty high up on the list in terms of uh, um, our use of one-time use plastics. We're, we use a lot of it, um, especially in big families. Um, and it finds its way to the beach. And 60% of, of the um, debris, debris, plastic debris that we actually find at the beach are coming from the people visiting the beach or, um, or people that visited the beach before. I mean, um, um, it's not, uh, some of it is coming from other countries, but we really can say that a lot of it is us. And that means that we need to um, do a lot more education and a lot more awareness um, and, start, and start dealing with, with what I would call one of our main problems, yes. Okay, um, here's a question. I want to read this to you in full because it bugs anybody who lives in Israel and has been there. Um, not exactly the marine situation, but related. I would like to know why the nat area of nature reserve on the Ashkelon coast are ignored by road developers and dune buggy drivers and car drivers. They build roads in the sand dunes where the turtles lay their eggs and they drive on the beach and no one seems to care. Um, enforcing that issue, first of all, I mean, I don't know how much this helps, but the situation is a lot better than it used to be. Um, okay. so, so, so it doesn't mean that people don't care. People care, the NPA cares. Enforcing it is, is incredibly hard because they don't have, they know not to have um, license plate numbers. Um, so also in terms of reporting and using the public to report it, I said that in Sea Watch we're going to add that, we're going to add a category of um, driving on the beaches exactly for that reason, because I, we feel that it's something that the public um, um, pays attention to and should have and should have a way of, of easily passing that information on. Um, so hopefully we'll start seeing even more of a difference once the public can can report it. Um, but but enforcing it is 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 very hard. And usually it's what the NPA does is um, they go out for a specific enforcement day of we are here now to find uh, people who are driving on the beach. But in terms of the spontaneous uh, Jeep driver or, or motorcycle driver, um, unless the ranger is there by chance exactly at that moment, um, it will be very hard to catch him. Okay. Um, do you know if uh, the regulators visit fish markets to enforce regulations or not? Um, they do. They definitely do, and that's something that we do as well. We have an intern. Um, we have an intern this year. It's actually the first year that we're going to do it. Um, um, who's going to help us um, go to fish markets and and sort of document any um, things that shouldn't be happening? Okay. Um, is it realistic? Somebody asks or suggests perhaps putting cameras on the beaches to uh, catch illegal fishermen since probably we have them there for terrorist infiltration anyway. Uh, I don't know if all of our beaches are actually visually available to somebody sitting in a, in a military headquarters, but. Yeah, uh, cameras are, the, usually the main issue is stealing. I haven't, I haven't heard of anybody being, I mean, surfers wanted a camera on the beach so that they could look at the, at the waves. Um, and even oh. that, camera, that camera disappeared very, very quickly. Um, oh, wow. So I, I think that would actually probably be the, the main, the, the, the first problem. Um, in, um, it does sort of connect to the fact that the NPA does use um, Rachfan. Drones. Drones. Drone. Um, um, so are, they do use drones to try and sort of see what's going on in areas of the beach that are farther from them or deeper in the water, um, but they, they're still in the area. So, so no, no technology uh, um, uh, solutions in terms of, of cameras. Okay, um, there, I'll put a group together a few questions. Somebody asked about international treaties regarding fishing, uh, if there's any and if we comply. And other people are asking, has there been any collaboration along the seacoast with Gaza? And in a lot, is there cooperation with uh, Jordan? Okay, international treaties is, um, is, 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 is pretty complex. I'm not, I'm not exactly uh, the best in, 
everything that's going on in terms of treaties. We are part of the GFCM, which is the UN's uh, fishing committee. Um, um, we, so, we, so we do, we are connected to that. There are some things that have to do with um, um, deep water fishing uh, that, we, that we're on, but, but as a whole, there's, there's more work to do in terms of international treaties. Um, Gaza, no. Um, sadly, no. Um, in Elat, there's a, there there are there there are things going on in terms of conservation and trying to do collaborations with Jordan and Egypt, um, less having to do specifically with fishing, um, but um, other conservation projects. A lot having to do um, um, with sightings of sharks and rays. Um, trying to do sort of. A, um, there's a there's another NGO called Sharks in Israel that is dealing with uh, with these with these issues, um, and creating those collaborations. Great. Okay. A um, bunch of uh, seeing a bunch of questions that uh, I think we've already answered. Um, here's a question though: um, if there's a problem with that. Uh, the fishing around the uh, nuclear plant, around the uh, power plants, um, because it's warm water. Why isn't there like a mini area where it's forbidden? Can't they just be forbidden in that small area of fishing? It's it's a, it's, a, it's a great question. It's exactly what we're hoping um, to to be able uh, to do. I actually have a meeting there this week um, to to sort of tour the area and try to see um, what we can do. It's important to say that it's not only fishing that's hurting. Um, um, that's problematic for the sharks there. There are also a lot of people in the water, scuba diving, uh, um, um, snorkeling, motorboats. Uh, uh, Cups, uh, basically uh, very, very busy, and that can be just as detrimental um, to the sharks as fishing. So there, we really need to look at a, a um, to try and, and come up with a holistic solution um, to what goes on there six months out of the year. Interesting. Um, so we're going to wind up here in a second. A couple more quick questions. Um, somebody wrote that uh, in Florida, they're trying to develop menus and restaurants with lionfish. So I guess remove as many of them as possible. So eat up your lionfish. But um, somebody asked about the main problem with invasive species. It's that they're they're overpowering the native ones, right? They're exactly you know. lionfish is, is a great example for it. it. It's it's they're sort of like a very very efficient predator. Um, so they um, eat local the local fish. Um, there have been lionfish that we've looked at their at their stomach contents, and you see um, all of the local fish in their in their stomach contents. There, they also, um, um, in terms of of, of the habitat itself, they're meaning if there's a lionfish in the area, the other fish are going to go somewhere else because they're worried that they're going to they're, they're going to be eaten. So it also changes the whole dynamic um, of of populations in the habitat. Um, in terms of eating them, um, it was an idea that came up when looking at what um, other countries in the world um, did. Right now, we don't have enough lionfish for that, meaning there wouldn't be enough to sort of have a, a constant flow of lionfish to the restaurants, um, which is, I guess, good news. So That's good news. That's good news. Um, and final question here. I think a lot of people will probably want to know, um, what's the most popular and common fish in Israel? Which are, which are the more unique and common types that are breeding uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean? So, so groupers, groupers are, are, used to be more common, um, but are very special here. They're, uh, they're, um, they're, they, they can become big if you allow them to grow to, to those sizes. Um, they're one of the main predators, the, the, the local predators. Um, there's research showing, by the way, that they are very important to, uh, to keeping lionfish population, populations in check. Meaning they are the ones that can eat lionfish, also not when the lionfish is already in a, uh, uh, mature. Um, the, but when it's still young, uh, groupers are the ones who are going to eat those uh, um, eat those lions, lionfish. Um, I, I worked for a while in the aquarium in Jerusalem, so I also got to sort of get to know groupers. And I have to say that they're also very smart, um, and they and they have characters. I mean, I could tell they look exactly the same, and I could tell the difference between two groupers just because the way that they were acting. Um, hmm. So I knew. So 
we sometimes don't take that into account when we're when we're thinking about fish but but um i believe no we don't yeah so also in israel by the way they're counted they've historically been they don't count as wild animals they count as um they have a different status um meaning sharks and dolphins and sea turtles are wild animals and and so their so their status is that in terms of protecting them fish are not fish are fish are agriculture um fascinating so, this is a fascinating regulatory note yes yeah yeah uh, okay well oh and one more one more uh interesting sure. fish that we didn't actually talk about is the blue tuna so blue tuna um um is Critically endangered, um, and they they breed um, in two in one area in the Atlantic and one area in a few areas in the Mediterranean. Um, and we are very lucky that they that they also breed here in the Eastern Mediterranean. Um, sad, in our economic waters, sadly, they are not protected um, at all. So they come to breed here and um, and are often fished. Uh, during that. So another very, very special fish that, that comes to visit um, Israel and guitar wow. fish that I already spoke about today. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, Hadas Gan Perkal, thank you very much for this thank you. informative hour. Uh, I learned a lot. It was very interesting, well presented. Uh, the, uh, the blue half of Israel, it's something we don't think enough about, uh, but it's so important to our wildlife and biodiversity and so important to life on earth and life in Israel. Uh, where would we be without our beaches and where would we be without that incredible sea? So uh, thank you for the presentation and for your Thanks efforts for uh, in, uh, in protecting it, preserving it. Uh, and as some of our questioners have said, and as I'd like to repeat, uh, we are a not-for-profit. You all, uh, we, we, do, we depend on support of the public uh, in Israel and around the world. Uh, both for um, public support, but also for financial support. Uh, there are links to um, uh, donate to us online in, uh, in the email that you received that you registered for this uh, even three hours ago. And uh, we uh, hope to see you back with us next week. Uh, and in two weeks, I'm sorry, in two weeks. Uh, we're always here. We're here every other Sunday uh, uh, at this same time, 8 p.m. in Israel. And... Uh, we enjoyed being with you all, enjoyed the questions and answers. If I missed a couple or we didn't get to them and you uh, want to, you all have my uh, email address. I'll get the questions to Hadass if we need to. And uh, thank you so much. Appreciate it very much. A good day to everybody and a good week. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Avi, in Toronto as well.